Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Moms in Real Estate. I'm Angela Fazio, one of your hosts, and today we're talking with Elle DeWitt from Arizona. She's a mother of three, and one of which is on the way. And we're going to be talking to her about her journey towards becoming a confident woman and working in partnership really closely with her husband, managing a blended, a blended family, all while killing it in real estate. So let's get started. Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. This is my beautiful, oh, that way, co-host, Kristen Cantrell. And hi, <laughs> Elle. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Very good. Well, let's start us off and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, man. Um, I'm an Arizona native. I grew up in Chandler, Gilbert. I've worked in the real estate industry, like, really my whole adult years. I got to work for a company called Apartment Hunters through high school. And then I started working in lending right after that. As soon as I started working in lending, it was it was so obvious that I was the youngest person. So I decided to get my real estate license and my loan origination license. And I was duly licensed for a while just for the knowledge. I bought my first house when I was 19, my second house when I was 21, my third house when I was 23. That's awesome. I actually started dating the agent that sold me my third house. And now <laughs> he's my husband. Um, yeah. No. Is so that how you and Max met? Yes. Oh my gosh, I love that. No. Yes. Oh, we had we had a couple of connections, but he did sell me my third house and then we started dating after that. See the benefit of being a real estate agent. (laughs) I met my real estate. (laughs) Wait, how did you someone? How did you pick him as your real estate agent? So he actually knew a loan officer that worked in my office. And we had done like a a couple transactions together, but we were just names on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then we actually met when we started doing houses and yeah, then we started dating. He, yeah, he's handsome. If you saw him, (laughs) you'd be like, yeah, I date him too. (laughs) He has like a huge beard. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I have super hot, super, super hot. (laughs) (laughs) I hope we all think our husbands are hot. It would be pretty bad if we did that's sad. I know. It's sad. I have stories Aww. about that. This is this is like a rabbit trail. But I interviewed a woman once who said that she had to put sex on the on the calendar as a reminder because she didn't really like it. Oh no! What? Oh. I was like, I wanted to cry right there. I wanted to cry right there interview. I just wanted to cry and like get her some love. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm sitting here pregnant again, so we obviously don't need to have sex as a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> and your son and your, you know, your daughter is 10 months old, right? Yes. <laughs> so, and you're 28 weeks pregnant. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that that is like one of the craziest ones I've heard. I, I accidentally know. got pregnant right before my son turned one. And I was like, oh, no, I can't be pregnant. Like, this is too soon. And you're like, because they'll be how far apart? If I get a full 13 months, we'd be lucky. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. How (laughs) cool, though. I mean, that's going to be so cool later on. You're going to go through a hard part, but then it'll get really, really amazing. I feel so guilty saying that I was scared when I found out because now I'm just, I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. So exciting. Do you know what you're having? (laughs) It's a boy. A boy. Oh, how cool. Yes, I love that. So yes. you're a really busy woman. You've got a stepson who's eight. Mm-hmm. And you've got those two that you've got. And you do a great real estate business. So we got to start talking about a couple of things that I learned about you. And one of the things is, because I only met you first for the first time in the pre-interview. And I was very surprised to read uh, that it was a difficult road for you to get to be a confident woman. I know. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that when Mm -hmm. I read that. It -hmm. just, wow. So can you, because you look super confident. You sound super confident. You probably are now, but tell us a little bit about that. What do you mean? 
Oh, no. Um, like anxiety was always an issue for me. And the crazy thing is my parents are, my gosh, they could talk to anybody. They could stop you in the gym and talk to you about nothing and make you stop your workout for an hour just to <laughs> communicate with them. And like, I grew up seeing that my whole life, but for some reason I felt like I struggled at it. And then especially being self-employed, I learned like, you can't just sit back. You have to go out and ask for business. You have to ask for work. And it took me watching some like some partners that we worked with just how confident they were to be like hey I'm the best lender ever mm-hmm. <laughs> and there was there was no question to it and you'd believe them because they were just so confident about it but I personally I had to learn that how did you how did you learn that like what steps did you take just doing it over and over or putting yourself I can't out even there? say that it was all real estate it was a lot of life stuff yeah there's been a lot of life situations that have happened in the past couple of years that like I just have to get over it and I realized standing back like I'm good with who I am why Mm -hmm. am I questioning myself because I I don't want to be anybody else do you always want to be do you feel like stepping into that team lead role where you have like a real estate team that you're running like really helped with okay I need to be a leader to them and that helped your confidence not so much for me. I still like to, I still like to be on the back end of a lot mm-hmm. of the situations. But <laughs> no, I still like to amplify my husband and make him do those situations. And I just kind of stay back and do a little bit more of like the computer work or the hard work. <laughs> it is the like hard work. Situation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so funny. I was as a young woman. I was so insecure. And I, I acted like the opposite. I acted super confident because I just did. But I was like a, I, I don't know, I was a hot mess. And there are two things that helped me get over that. And number one was getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ because he loves me. That's that's one of them. And you know, my husband, my husband it was the first person that I ever knew that actually knew everything about me and, and li- liked me and loved me. And that was like, well, all right. Right on. I don't have to pretend about anything. It was, it was like, I was almost 30 before I started to come around. So it's hard. All these girls who, who act like they've got it all together and they, they feel like a million bucks. I bet you they don't. And no. I wish we could talk about it more. No, no, I think it's a front. Um, my best friend, she actually has this saying, she has it tattooed on her. I think it was her grandpa that said knowledge is power. And I always thought about it like, through my adulthood. And I, I think about that's probably why I got my real estate license and my loan origination license, because that gives me confidence. Mm -hmm. When I feel like I know a topic round Robin, then I have no issue talking about it. If it's still something that I question myself, how am I going to go out and talk to other people about it? Mm -hmm. So I'd probably say knowledge was a big one. Yeah, I definitely think that. I, I don't know how, how I feel like I was born confident, but I'm just very like, I I talk all about how I'm a hot mess. I don't mind sharing all my struggles at all, but I really don't care what anyone thinks about me. Like I just kind of, I remember I telling my you. parents when I was like 16, like I am who I am, take it or leave it. Like I don't care. <laughs> I'm like I that now. You, for you sure. are like that now to think totally. of you not being like that is crazy. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I don't care at all. You know, but not I, not when I was a young woman, not not for sure. So mm-hmm. keep going. I mean, <laughs> God, I just don't work backwards. So tell us about um, you've got a thing in common with me. We have blended families, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about your stepson and your family situation, and and how that is for you. <clears throat> okay, so 2016 we got married, and I I tell everybody, you know, I I had to learn to be a wife and that I am now in this newlywed couple, but it was different because you have an instant family. I inherited my, my oldest son, which I feel so thankful. I got to be in his life when he was two, and now he's almost eight. So he doesn't know life without me. And frankly, I don't remember life without him, but I had a lot to think about. So 2016, while I'm still trying to work in lending and Max is over here doing real estate, I was gone. I'd leave at six and come home at six 
and it was hard. The boys had moved into my house. He's trying to work while entertaining his now three-year-old. It, it was so hard. So by 2017 is when, hey, we're a family. We need to do this together. So 2017, I let the one license lapse and we started doing real estate together. And that was the same year that we created Steadfast. I mean, it's hard but it's been awesome. We're going on like four years and we just stayed consistent. And I feel like consistency is just everything for our industry, so. Wow, I, you know what I'm impressed about is, well, for me, I've always worked with my husband since we've met. And oh, well, it was really hard at first because I'd kick him under the table or, you know, <laughs> an appointment and I'd talk over him or he'd talk over me. Um, <laughs> I still do that sometimes in meetings, but. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, it took a while for us to get into a groove where we just really gelled and com could complete each other's sentences. And I would I I could say until like I think it was last week or the week before I had never I have never spent one day or night away from my husband, but he got kidney stones. And so he was in the hospital and those darn they wouldn't let me come in even with a hazmat suit. But we're like one now. We're like one. Mm -hmm. I did not work with my husband, our relationship wouldn't be as rich and as sweet and mm -hmm. as wonderful as it is. I mean, and I know that not everybody can do that. I get it. But mm -hmm. it sounds to me like you said, okay, I'm going to give this up and come over here and take this risk because mm -hmm. I value that relationship in this family. That's oh, hundred percent. And I've, <laughs> it's funny. I give into him a lot, <laughs> but this one was huge. And this one, I can't say that it was all rosy when we first started, though, because it definitely was not. And 2017, our first year, it was almost like we were newlyweds, so we still liked spending a lot of time together. But we were almost two agents that did the exact same job, but with each other. And it took us a while to be like, we're not helping each other. We're not being a tag team. We're just doing the same job, but two people are doing it now. So then we had to regroup. And we had to look at each other and be like, okay, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. And we had to dig deep. And frankly, we're, we're very aware of what we suck at and what, <laughs> what the other person's better at. So we had well, to it seems like you guys are pretty again. opposite, right? We are. Yeah. We are. So now, now we kind of have it figured out, but it took a while. It wasn't easy. It's hard. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I always wonder, like, if Dave got his license, because he would be terrible at going out and getting the business, but that's, that's the part I like, but he would be, he's so good at, like, the detail side of it, like, we would probably work well together, but that would be terrifying. Mm -hmm. We're, <laughs> like, like oh, and I, Chuck, Chuck and I are, like, almost exactly the same in almost every way, so that has its challenges in and of itself, so I'm super dominant he's super dominant so we really had to find a way for me to honor him and and still still be my own self which he totally lets me do and honor him as as the leader of our mm -hmm. of our businesses as the leader of our family and um he is the first man my in my entire life that i would even consider submitting to do you know what i mean yeah i don't know i like I, it is my pleasure to submit my husband because he's worthy of it he's amazing See, you're nicer than me <laughs> Way nicer than me too. <laughs> duties that Max would probably reach out to like a transaction coordinator. He would reach out to me and ask for those favors. And I always took it like, what the heck? You want me to stop everything I'm doing to go write you up this contract because you're out running to the next house. Anyways, it, it didn't bounce off of each other very well. So that's why we had to like the second year, we still had to regroup and come out with like, what are your responsibilities? What are mine? So we don't have to talk about it ever again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, one of the things that I learned is I don't like to do some of the things that Chuck is awful at. But the thing is, is what I realized is even though I didn't like to do that and I felt at first like he was telling me what to do, I, I realized, no, it was it's he's valuing that I have the ability to do that well or, or better than he can at least. And so he's asking me not because he's telling me what to do. He's asking me because he, he values that I, I can come alongside him in areas that he either can't do or is awful at or something like that. So I had to change the way I was thinking of, about receiving that information. So I wouldn't be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You gotta figure it out. <laughs> I, you know what, what I hear. 
I, I, we totally do. It's not perfect, but we totally do. So tell me about, um, um, Oh gosh, what was I going to ask you? Oh, you, so I wanted to tell a story that I started to tell you before. This is so random for the audience, but it actually isn't random for us. And we're having the conversation and you're just listening. So I was, she's pregnant. So she was talking about some stories about her baby and her and whatever. And so I had shared that. Don't you even feel bad about that? Cause when I was pregnant both times, cause I have six kids, but I only had two of them. And so, um, cause it's his, there's two from his first marriage. I had one from my first marriage. We had one together. He's our favorite. And then we adopted two. And so <laughs> both times I was pregnant, I felt I'm upstairs all the time. Like how did crazy. you do that? Cause yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit clumsy anyway. And so okay. I, I, I was so, so oh, big. You were really big. Yeah. I was oh. like a really, really, my belly was like, it was crazy. Cause I had really big babies. And um, I would just lose my balance and fall down the stairs. And the first time mm -hmm. Jeff moved out with Matthew, and I was like, I'm okay. And then afterwards, every time I would fall down the stairs, he'd be like, you all right, babe? And I'd be like, yep, yeah, all good. <laughs> I oh can't my believe gosh. it turned out okay. Oh Seriously. my gosh, I'd be terrified. Yeah. I it. It, it worked out. It's like shock absorbers in there. <laughs> I had... I had my dog like run and jump on my stomach when I was pregnant with Dean. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I was freaking out. And my sister told me, she's like, listen, they're so safe in there. And she's like, my, she gave me like this whole story of what her doctor said and how like protected they are, but it's still terrifying. Like anytime your belly mm -hmm. gets hit when you're yeah. pregnant. Oh my gosh. I just remember I that. Fell off, I fell off our trampoline when I was oh. pregnant with this one. What were you, you doing on trampoline? <laughs> I'm an idiot. I was just <laughs> going to like get the hose, you know, Waylon was playing with the hose on it, just cleaning up. <clears throat> Y'all, it's an in-ground trampoline. Like, oh how God. did I fall? <laughs> I tripped I fell, broke one of my those. toe. Oh, <laughs> my, oh my God. I still waddled to the doctor because <laughs> it was my ultrasound to find out the gender. Yeah. And I was oh. not about to miss that. No. Yeah. So I have a broken eggplant looking toe. <laughs> and I still carried Bobby with me and waddled in to find out that it was a boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Fun I love fact, that. Fun fact about Angela. I do these now a lot. I can't go on trampolines ever anymore because I can't jump and not pee myself. Do you pee yourself? Yes. It's a, tr it's a struggle. It. It's a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Danny Miller. Hi. Miss your face. Hi, Danny. <laughs> oh my gosh they work together nice oh my gosh i don't know so people can do it so there was an agent that worked for us once and she had a baby and she would always put her baby in the carrier on top of a counter and it was one of the stupid rocking ones and do you know how many times that fell off the counter i'm like girl you can look at a rocking thing on a counter because it's gonna rock its way off like two oh my gosh <laughs> the baby's fun but it gives me anxiety, anxiety thinking about it yeah <laughs> so um yeah you can do all kinds of things that don't don't seem like it should be okay we're all we're all okay we're doing the best we can <laughs> oh that gives me anxiety oh so sometimes gosh. i have to unhook the car seat and like turn it so i can get her out yeah and that gives my husband mad anxiety he's so mad <laughs> So I'm like, okay, well, I'm about to buy this super expensive car seat. They make, they make car seats now that rotate. They swivel, they yeah. Do? Yes. Yes, swivel. they're legit. The, mm. the base that it hooks into swivels now. Genius. I'm Genius. at a grandma stage now. So my daughter's about to have her second baby in October. So she can get the swivel seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those. That's awesome. So how do you get your business? Tell me about how your team runs and how you get your business. And we are, well, for Max and I, we're referral base only. We've never paid for leads. We've never done cold calling. We we're both native. We have a huge sphere, friends and family, and then just referrals. Um, so for steadfast, our group is a little bit different. He always wants to expand, but we always come back to the idea of, you learn, you lose the personable relationship when you expand, when you go and hire like a showing assistant or something like that. You know, and people want to work with Max and Els because they want to see us opening the doors. They want to work with us. They want to have the conversation. So 
we created Steadfast not to necessarily help us, but just to create like this awesome group of standalone agents that they get their own leads, they do their own business, they keep their own commission, but we are a family. Like we're 100% friends, we get together, and like we're not gonna make you sit through a meeting that doesn't pertain to you. We'll ask, or we know already, what are you seeing in the market? What can we help with? What, are you having Binzer issues? Are you having inspection issues? Like our meetings are 100% dedicated to what they're experiencing so that it's helping them. Otherwise, it's, it's really 12 to 15 agents of our friends and we just mingle together. That's all. I love that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. We love it. it just shows like how important culture is. You know, I think yeah. that, you know, even with when we were Revelation, it was what's the number one reason people joined Revelation and it was always culture and yeah. people love sticking around for culture. It helps them in their business. It's, it's so important. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I, I never want to live that feel with my inner circle, like, Mm -mm. and Nicole and all of our inner circle, it's family. And that's this, that that's the right way to do life. You know, that's how God mm -hmm. created us to be in relationship, you know, and some of the, some of the agents I work with, oh my gosh, my life would not be the same if I didn't get to work with them, you know? So mm -hmm. I agree with you. it's really cool. Yeah, no, we're small. So some of our meetings are right here in our house. Most of our clients, they're our friends. If you're not already, you're going to be our friend by the end of this. They're probably going to be in my home sharing a meal with my family at some point throughout the transaction. Everything is very, very personal to us. So mm -hmm. that's, nice. that's kind of how we run business. That's good that you guys are of the same mind that way. Mm -hmm. I yeah, love that. that is awesome. What you are just a lovely person. I'm, I'm really glad to meet you. <laughs> that is wonderful. So what advice could you give, um, I mean, you've got a lot, everyone's got a lot going on, but you've got your, your family, your baby, you know, you've got all of this stuff going on and, and you're still doing a phenomenal business. What advice can you give to people that something that really helped you or you think could really help them to um, keep pushing forward with all of the distractions and all the things that we moms have? For me, I love being busy. When my response is like, hey, how's it going? And I say busy. You always take that as a negative, but it's really a positive. Mm -hmm. I would never complain about it. So for me, that's what catapults me. If you're not, if it's like a Sunday and you're trying to be good. <laughs> <laughs> that's my sister's best friend, Angela. Yeah. And it's her sister-in-law. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. That was so cute. Oh, oh she's so sweet. I have the best family. Um, anyways, if you're like, sitting around on Sunday and you're trying to observe the Sabbath, for instance, we go nuts. We go absolutely nuts. We feel like there's something that we should be doing. And it's just awesome. Like real estate is awesome. If you're looking for service, if you're looking for opportunity to help other people, there is no better time in someone's life than when they are moving. All I would say to anybody is take yourself out of it and just think about them. Think Absolutely. about, they have a family, I could probably go help watch their kids. I could just invite them into my house because they have an open house and we're in the middle of a pandemic and they have nowhere to go. So there's just so many opportunities to help. And then we get to get our kids involved to help with our business as well. It's wonderful. That's what I'd say to anybody is take yourself out of the equation. I just think that you're in the, the job of serving others. Yep. That's I so could perfect. not agree more. Mm -hmm. Anybody who doesn't have a servant heart in a business like real estate has no business being in real estate. So true. There's a lot of them out <laughs> there, true. but yeah. Well, it, it, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk with you today. Um, you're wonderful. And uh, I hope that everyone that's listening is as blessed as I have been today. So, and Kristen, thank you as always, my beautiful co host. Of course. Um, stick stick on for a minute afterwards, Elle. But all of you, thank you for watching and tune in next week for another episode. God bless you.